Well, hello there. It is great to see you again, and welcome back to MSP Success Spotlight. I'm your host and moderator, Ryan Ruff, and this here is the show where we bring on extraordinary managed service providers and highlight a handful of the different things that they're doing in the IT solutions and cybersecurity spaces. You know, we obviously like to get, uh, you know, the industry insights from the MSPs that come on, but we also love that differentiating factor, that secret sauce, if you will, uh, to, you know, just show us how they're standing out from the rest of the pack, how they're separating themselves to be able to achieve the level of success that they have seen to date. And today we've got a great episode teed up for you. Awesome guest that we're bringing on. Today's episode is going to be featuring Mr. Russell Poucher, the president and founder of Creative Resources Technology Group, which is based out of the Southern California area. Uh, we're super excited to have Russell aboard. And before I bring him on, uh, just a few quick details about Russell and his company. Now they have a heavy focus in cybersecurity. Uh, we're going to obviously be getting into that a lot today in our conversation. But Russell, get this, Russell is an Amazon number one best best-selling author. He helped co-author the book, You Are the Number One Target. Uh, so be sure to check that out on Amazon. Uh, but Russell's works in books didn't stop there. He's actually in the process of working on another book surrounding the topic of cybersecurity. It's going to be coming out here this year in 2022. Now, in addition to that, Russell wasn't done there. He's also going to be featured in a special edition of MSP Success Magazine that will be dropping here soon. So be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, boy, are we excited to, you know, and fortunate really to have Russell aboard with us on the show today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring him on and get today's conversation started. Russell, welcome aboard. Good to see you this morning. Well, thank you, Ryan. Good to see you as well. Yeah. Thank happy. Oh man, we are happy to have you aboard. I appreciate you carving some time out of your day to be with us. Um, but hey, we're going to be talking, you know, all things creative resources, technology group, uh, and, and uh, obviously all things cybersecurity today. But I think a good place for us to start is why don't we zoom out a little bit? Let's have you give our bring our audience up to speed a little bit on just how it is that you got into this business in the first place. You know, everybody's trek into the IT solution, the cybersecurity world is different. I always love to hear where you came from. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, wonderful. Um, quite a ways back, but uh, uh, I was actually working for a pre-press company, a print shop. And while I was working for them, I had a lot of clients that were calling me for tech support and they just didn't have the knowledge and the background within their own organizations to take care of their own needs. And, and as I was working for someone else, I also realized that I can make a huge difference in the world of IT by going out on my own because I saw a little bit what it took to run a business. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of the decisions within this organization and I was able to help a lot of their customers. And, and really what was happening was um, uh, as soon as we got uh, the customers taken care of with their IT needs, then I was able to bill more uh, money for the client because they were more productive as well. Sure, sure. So, I mean, really a customer centric approach, Russell. Talk to me about maybe uh, some of those early days. You know, you are the founder of Creative Resources Technology Group. I always love to hear about some of those early days and founding a company, building it to the successful entity that it is today. What were some of those early days like and, and some of those initial clients and conversations? Tell me about that time. We um, we were kind of the redheaded stepchild back then when we first started <laughs> because it was a very special niche. It was the Macintosh niche, sure. and there wasn't a whole lot of managed services or even tools available for us on the Mac side. They were all PC centric. And so when I first started out, I ended up writing my own set of tools that we used as we call it uh, version one of our MSP. And as, as that grew and as the software started dating and I didn't have time to keep it up, I started finding other tools that would allow us to very efficiently manage our client networks. And they've, um, excuse me, they've been um, calling on us ever since because we're able to fix their problems very quickly. Um, we're able to keep them secure. To this date, we have never had a single uh, workstation that's under our management compromised by any ransomware or any cybersecurity issues. So we've had a really good run with that, right? Knock on wood. <laughs> wow, wanna... wow. No, that's fantastic to hear. And obviously your work speaks for itself, uh, you know, in having that that level of a success rate, but also really interesting to hear that you guys operate, uh, you know, really are experts in the Macintosh world. And I would imagine that, uh, you know, given that a lot of these conversations that, you know, exist around IT systems, but not only IT systems as a whole, but just 
on this show, uh, these are mainly PC centric conversations, you know, w- would you find that your, uh, your involvement specifically within the Mac world, uh, you know, it's opened some unique doors led to some unique clients, uh, along the way, anything like that? Yeah, it, it absolutely has. We get a lot of people that are from the creative space and the manufacturing mm-hmm. space, okay. uh, graphic designers, print shops and, and advertising agencies, um, PR agencies. And, and w- what we found, they love the fact that we specialize on the Mac side. Now, ironically enough, um, I have 14 of my support desk personnel are PC centric. I got three that are Mac centric and, (laughs) and I train them all the way up to exactly what to do on the Mac side. So they're following my SOP and that's how they're able to make a difference because what we've seen and what we've heard so many times, we'll have clients that come to us and they'll say, yeah, we, we hired a a managed service provider and they said that they have no problem taking care of the Mac side just to find out that they really didn't uh, uh, know what they were doing so well. And so they could potentially get compromised. We actually had two different clients that came to us because they had been compromised. And that was because their um, current vendor did not have the expertise on the Mac side to properly lock them down and take care of their needs. Wow. Wow. I, so, I mean, I'm sure they were thankful to, to find you and your group and obviously learn about your expertise on the Mac side. But Russell, I want to circle back to a point that you just, you, you know, you made a few moments ago in that you guys haven't really experienced, uh, you know, a client that's been under your watch under, you know, uh, fall victim to any sort of malware or ransomware. I'd love to know why you believe that that has that is a statistic to this day that you guys are able to achieve that kind of goal because uh, does it start with the educational efforts maybe with your clients the products and services that you guys work with them on you know where do you believe that 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 awesome statistic stems from <laughs> so you want me to give you the secret sauce I hope none of my competitors are listening <laughs> um, it, it's actually a combination of the tools we use and how we implement them and how I train all of my engineers how to deal with different situations. And um, the most common things that we might see flash up on our dashboards that says, uh, well, this might be a problem. It makes them question everything to look a little bit deeper. And as they're questioning it and looking a little bit deeper, they're like, wait a minute, this associates with something else. And let me take a look at at another screen and see if this is going to cause them a problem long term. And they're empowered to make these fixes on the fly. So in the middle of the night, um, they're going to let the night shift know that, hey, you got to go ahead and fix this or jump onto that machine while the worker's not there. So we can get onto the machine, fix the issues before the worker even comes in for the day. So, um, you know, our goal is to make sure that the clients do not have any downtime. That is where they really feel the problems. If they have to call us and say, hey, I've got a problem with X, Y, Z, and Susie isn't able to be on her computer at all, and she's not able to bill, she's not able to do production, we've got a real problem and it gets stressful for me. And and my guys know, let's fix that before it becomes an issue. Because a lot of managed service providers talk about the proactive approach. Mm -hmm. And this really is proactive, grabbing these situations and fixing it before the client realizes it. It's not proactive to the point of the problems already happened. Mm -hmm. Now we're just remediating it after the fact, but before the client gets in for the day. So, yeah, you know, fortunately, the amount of critical tickets that we get is probably only a couple a month. Um, and, mm-hmm. and that's really good because the critical tickets means we drop everything, we address it. Server sure. down, down, we're going to jump right on it. And uh, it's kind of like a fire drill. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Hey, all industries have their own versions of those fire drills, but uh, it helps to obviously, you know, mitigate them when you can. And then, of course, address them in a you know timely, responsive manner when when they inevitably do pop up. Um, yeah. But hey, R- Russell, a big topic of, of conversation today is surrounding the idea of cybersecurity these days. I mean. Boy, has this been a conversation that has just blown up over the last 10, 20 years, even given advances in modern technology, so on and so forth. I'd love to get your take. I know this is a loaded question here, but I'd love to get your take on why it is that you believe cybersecurity is so important these days for for businesses as a whole. Now, that's a that's actually a great question. So uh, what we've seen over the years and especially during the pandemic is that there were so many different scams that were coming across things that we were seeing. There's been phishing emails that I've seen that are really, really good. And I'm like, okay, I got to put this in a quarantine and test it because it may be a valid link. It may be a phishing attempt. And one of our taglines is we're going to help you out 
because IT matters. So when IT matters, you guys are calling on us. People don't start thinking about the IT until something goes wrong. And then it really matters to them, especially like I was saying, when a system is down or a server is down or the network is down. Um, 15, 10 years ago, uh, email went down and it was okay to fix it you know, throughout the day. Now email goes down and we're seeing our clients are like, no, it's got to get up right now. I got to send this email off. I got to send this quote off. So the urgency with our clients, I want to mirror that. And I want all of my team mirroring that as well so that they all have a sense of urgency. And uh, at CRTG University that we teach here, we're teaching that sense of urgency so that they jump in right away and says, okay, you're hurting, I'm hurting too. And I'm gonna get this fixed because IT does matter. So um, you, you'll, you'll hear me say that one thing all the time. And they hear me say it around here all the time when IT matters. Um, we're here for you and we're here to fix the issues. But to get back to your original question, why is cybersecurity such an important proposition right now? Because there are so many attacks. The attacks have gone up more than tenfold. Um, we're members of InfraGuard, which is part of a, a division or a joint venture between the FBI and Department of Homeland Security. We get briefings on a pretty regular basis of the various attacks that are coming out. Um, the various compromises that are coming out and all of the regulations that you hear that are coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. You guys have heard of, of HIPAA. You guys uh, uh, have heard of possibly ITAR. Some of these acronyms that we throw out there are related to security and how different industries have to adhere to these regulations. And um, these are because of all the attacks that we're seeing out there and they're looking at ways to help mitigate these risks, right? My job is to help mitigate these risks, these cybersecurity risks. Because if any one of my clients ever got attacked, they could get a ransom of $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 per workstation, and all of their data could be locked down and unusable, which means they are completely down. So like I was saying earlier, once the client goes down, that's a huge problem. Yeah. Um, the one ransomware attack that took place, uh, what, uh, 4th of July weekend of last year, that had a ransomware of $70 million wow. and it was insane wow. on how they were able to penetrate into the networks and lock down all of these computers. It, it, it was just, that was a hard one to believe. Yeah, absolutely. So if there's any takeaway for our audience, I mean, think about that 70 million, think about what if that was you and your company? I mean, that's exactly. a real conversation that we, you know, you can have one day if you're not taking the right precautions and, and, uh, and, and really making sure your ducks are in a row when it comes to this kind of stuff. But Russell, well, you know, I, I, I kind of want to, you know, you were talking about uh, the different um, security, almost compliance, at, like um, ideas that are coming into play. Uh, one thing that I kind of want to uh, get your take on is, is what you think the future of cybersecurity looks like. Maybe, I mean, I know we've seen crazy progress uh, in terms of this conversation in the last 10 years. Where do you see it in, within the next 10 years? Well, I think it's going to continue to rise. And What's going to happen overall is we've got to get all of our clients' education up to a much higher level because most of the compromises uh, come to the end user. They're going to come to people like me. They're going to be a link that I click on. They're going to be something that I do. It's going to be something that the employee does generally. So that, that makes up about two-thirds of all attacks are coming directly from something that the employee clicked on or executed back in their background. Um, one of the things that uh, that that we're going to see over the next 10 years is not only the increase, but it's going to be an exponential increase mm -hmm. on all of the cyber attacks. And we see it in the news. The news is really focused on these attacks. They're focused on the big attacks. We have in just a couple of weeks, we're, we're, we're on a countdown timer right now, that HIPAA is actually requiring any breach whatsoever to be reported to them. Mm. And now they're somewhat going after... Uh, what we could be called a whistleblower. They're going to come to me and they're going to say, do any of your clients have any breaches you want to tell us about, or we're going to find you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's one of those things where we are ethically bound to, to disclose breaches, mm -hmm. but it's also one of those things that I don't want to be in that position, which yeah. is why I lift the clients. I elevate them up so that we can probably block everything that might be coming in. And it's a vicious cycle. 
the amount yeah. of tools that I have to change on a yearly basis is just insane. Oh, and and uh, the licensing that goes into it and the learning curve that goes into it, because yeah. here's the new thread that wasn't here last year. Nobody knew how to block. Nobody even knew to block it. But now they say, oh, you got to do something about this. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so it's, it's always keeping up with the with the curve or trying to stay yeah. ahead of it. In our yeah. case, um, the only reason my only success in in having no breaches with any of our clients is the fact that I've stayed ahead of the curve and it is not an easy task. I'm, I'm away at training on a pretty regular basis and a lot of of uh, FBI briefings that I go to to find out what's next and a lot of reading. Yeah, so I can imagine. It's difficult and you don't want to be there after the fact cleanup because that's the hard part. Be there ahead of time and just stop it, prevent it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. R- Russell, two things you mentioned there that I, I want to hit on, uh, y- the employees and the fact and training. You know, it, we talk about on this show a lot with with other, uh, you know, all the MSPs that come on here is uh, this idea that, yes, employees are going to be a company's biggest asset, of course. Right. But they're also going to be their biggest liability when it comes yep. to cybersecurity issues. So talk to me a little <laughs> bit about any sort of educational efforts maybe that you guys go through to maybe help bring a, um, you know, a, a client of yours and their employees up to speed on just some best practices. Do you guys go through any educational efforts with your clients like that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually a, a great segue into um, not only are we training our employees, but we're training our clients' employees as well. Mm-hmm. So um, we put them through an onboarding phase where we we not only put them through the security awareness training, and it's not the let's do one hour a year. It's regular ongoing trainings that we're doing. And every time that we notice something uh, on our back end systems that that's going out of whack, we try to troubleshoot and figure out why is this happening? And it's only happening to this one particular user. Our, our, our clients, they are not experts in IT. They're experts in their business. And so they're not sure. They see something come up on the screen. They want to be able to trust it. So we deploy what's called a zero trust environment. And in the zero trust environment, we have to specifically allow new technologies into their network when they say, well, gosh, I I, want to I want to set this up in our network. So our clients are really good about approaching us ahead of time in our quarterly business reviews saying, hey, we're about to put in this CRM or we're about to do this new software. Can you take a look at all the specs and figure out how to how to secure it down and how to make sure that we stay in full compliance? Mm-hmm. And once we figure out how we can keep them in full compliance, then we're going to help to train. We, we are a part of every training that that vendor would do to their client. We will actually be there and we'll say, sure. OK, to keep this secure, here's what we've done. Here's the things you might experience. And here's a reminder of what you need to be doing to stay diligent at all times. Oh, I, I love that. I love that, you know, because education, boy, is that such a big part. I mean, hey, that's why we're here on the show today to educate some of the audience about not only the great work that you guys do in this space, but just the the issue as a whole. I mean, it is it, there is so much to unpack within this cyber. I mean, we could go on and on and on together, Russell. But one thing I, I do want to get into is is really the the nitty gritty of of the things that you do to help companies uh, with approaching cybersecurity. Do you have a few examples that maybe you could rattle off for us and just some of the things that you help to implement or incorporate when you forge maybe, let's say, a new relationship with a new client? Absolutely. So uh, uh, what we do is during the onboarding process, and I go back to that because that's really kind of the key to our success. Sure, sure. We're going to go through and we're going to bring in parts of a new infrastructure. That's on us. We, we, we build it into our cost, and we put in a new firewall to make sure that we're able to lock it down properly. We're also going to go through every single computer and make sure that is there any old antivirus software? Is there any old um, back doors that uh, uh, their old IT provider might get into? Because that happens time after time as we see stuff that was put in there that maybe wasn't documented properly. The client didn't even know was there. And we're like, yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and remove that. We take it back so that it's at a zero trust relationship. We know the level going in that um, uh, we don't have to worry about the compromises. And we make sure, so part of our guidelines, as soon as we've finished onboarding, our systems are gonna go in and check everything and make sure that they are following the NIST guidelines, which is the highest level of guidelines for cybersecurity, because I've already got it pre-programmed into our back end. And we always tell our clients that this this onboarding phase is a 30 day process. And they always say, oh, come on, we can do it a lot quicker than that. You can you can have your team come in and and get it all done in a day and and be done with it. 
but it really is a, a lengthy process because our backend systems are reading in some of the files that they've got. They're reading in some of the policies that we've got, and then we're pushing new policies into place. Well, security is always a balance point between security and usability, right? And, sure. and the more security we put in there, the harder it is for the users. So we're going to go in with an air of caution. We're going to put their security up here, and then we're going to slowly pick away and, uh, and, and get it so it's more usable for the clients without compromising what we feel is good general practice security. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, my key to that success is that I educate the client ahead of time that your users are going to be a little upset with us during the first 30 days. And that's where we start to level the playing field. Yeah. And then we come up with a baseline for your company. That is mm -hmm. your profile. We know exactly how your company works and what the workflow should look like. And we level the playing ground to make it as easy as it is for them to work while also keeping them as secure as possible. So it's it's a trade-off. Yeah. It definitely is. So Russell, I appreciate you carving some time out of your day to, to be with us on the show. But it, you know, before we before we let you go, if there is anybody out there in our audience that benefited from the conversation that we had today, and maybe they're interested in, in going through one of those discovery meetings with you and your team to just see where things stack up with their own cybersecurity efforts thus far, whether or not there's a good fit for you guys, what would be the best way somebody could go ahead and go ahead and reach out to you and your team to maybe get that that 15 minute discovery call on the books yeah well thanks ryan for having me on and and the easiest way um two ways really it's it's what do you prefer you can go to our website at uh, creativeresources.net or you can call us get on the phone with us and uh phone number is 877-622-7911 so those are the two easiest ways to get a hold of us Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, Russell, again, appreciate you and your time for, you know, being with us here on the show. I know you're a busy guy. You got a company to run. Uh, but hey, we have, you know, again, thank you for, for jumping aboard, giving us, you know, your industry insights, a little bit of that secret sauce uh, for you and your team over at Creative Resources Tech Group. And I uh, uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm looking forward to maybe having you back on the show down the road. Thank you, Ryan. It's been a pleasure and uh, you have a wonderful day as well. Alrighty, thanks, Russell. And hey, look, we want to take one final moment, as always, to thank you guys, our audience, for jumping aboard and being with us on the episode today. If you liked what you saw and you liked what you heard, please do us a favor, like the show, give it a comment, subscribe to it on whichever platform you're checking us out on. And then, of course, share this information with friends, family, business owners, anybody that you would bet, you know, that you believe would benefit from these types of IT cybersecurity conversations. At you know, at the end of the day, we've got some great guests that we've teed up for you on this show and some episodes to come. Great conversations that are coming along with those guests and we would hate to have you miss out on any potentially beneficial information for you and maybe your business. So for Mr. Russell Poucher, I'm Ryan Ruff. We're going to go ahead and say so long today, but we appreciate you being aboard with us for MSP Success Spotlight.